hello. Everybody, hello. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Thank you, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody, hello. Thanks for joining us today, your saltwater guide with another phenomenal seminar. Yep, 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 yep. All right. So, today, Opsin USA, Opsin fluorocarbon, gang, you want to go? I left my spools of Opsin on the boat. We were rooster fish fishing yesterday, and I left my spools on the boat. So I don't have any to show you, but I've been talking about it for weeks, months, years. Go to Opsin USA, check out the Opsin fluorocarbon, put in the code YSWG, and you'll get your Opsin shipped straight to you with a discount. Go to Opsin USA, order up some fluorocarbon. You got to have fluorocarbon, and especially for what we're going to be talking about today. So yesterday I put out a request that you guys send me topics to talk about. Send them to your saltwater guide at yahoo.com. Your saltwater guide at yahoo.com. You send me your uh, send me your request for what you'd like to talk about. And if I decided to talk about it, I'd send you a t-shirt. Well, <laughs> one person, I can't even believe it. We had a little over 3,000 people watch yesterday and one person sent us an email. Don't be afraid to send us an email. Nothing bad's going to happen. If you want to know about something, send us an email. We're going to send out a shirt to that person like I promised that we would. And today we're going to talk about what they asked us to talk about. It's that easy. I mean, don't be afraid. It's that easy, gang. Send me an email. And then tomorrow, if you guys call in, we'll talk. We'll chit chat. We'll answer some questions on the call in tomorrow. Call me up. We'll answer some questions. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Tomorrow's show, Friday, Free Flow Friday, we'll just chit-chat for a little while. If no one calls in and talks, I'll just talk about whatever the heck I want to talk about like I normally do. Today, we're going to talk about catching halibut. The different things I like to do to catch halibut, the way I like to do it. I cannot, one thing I can promise you, I cannot talk about how you like to do it. I have no idea what you enjoy. I have no idea what you like to eat. I have no idea what you like to fish for. And I have no idea how you like to do it. All I know is how I do it. And that's the only thing I can talk about. So today we're going to talk about the way I like to fish halibut. There's a couple of different baits that I prefer to use. My number one, very most favorite bait to use. I'm a bait fisherman. Let's be honest. I'm not a lure fisherman. I, I can fish with lures as good as anybody. And I have, like yesterday, we we're talking about that, uh, slow pitch carnata jig. I can fish lures as good as anybody, but I like to fish bait. That's my thing. I'm a bait fisherman. I like to fish bait. And my very most favorite bait to fish halibut is grunion. I love to use dead grunion to fish for halibut. That's my favorite bait. I have a great grunion story. A lot of you heard it during story time, but I like to go down to the beach, gather up those grunion at night, when they're uh, coming up on the sand to spawn, throw them in Ziploc bags, freeze them 100 in a bag, and then take that bag and go halibut fishing. And the other thing, my favorite bait is anchovies. Those two baits are my very favorite baits for fishing halibut. Now, a lot of people like to use mackerel, sardines, all that stuff. I'm just talking about me. I've had phenomenal success with both the grunion and the anchovy. And then the way I like to fish them is I don't put all those different rigs together with 15 different knots and swivels and, and lead swivels and triangle swivels and all that different stuff and a trap hook and all that stuff. Because what I learned from my buddies that fish the uh, bounce ball, and I'm not a bounce ball person either because I like to have the rod in my hand and I like to fish. I like to flutter the bait back, and I like to fish. Bounce balling, guys, those halibut don't nibble. They come up and they inhale that bait, and they're slow trolling that bounce ball rig, and that fish inhales it. That's why I believe that my method works so good, and it works good for me. I use a sliding sinker. Depending on the depth of the water, that's going to... 
determine how much of a weight I'm going to use. When I'm fishing in the shallows, like I love to fish down off San Onofre or, or trestles or up off of uh, San Clemente State Park, State Beach right there. Over at Catalina, you can learn all these spots on our website, yoursaltwaterguide.com. We have so many spots that we talk about and how to fish them. And, and I talk to my clients all the time about how to get better at fishing for halibut. But I like to use a sliding sinker and then the hook right to the slider. No swivels, no beads, no Carolina keepers, none of that stuff. The sliding sinker right to the hook. Nose hook my sardine or nose hook my uh, grunion side to side. Drop it down to the bottom, let it drift along the bottom. As it's drifting along the bottom, when I start to feel a bite, I let the fish take it. And it's like, if you would think about it, it's almost like fly lining on the bottom. Because there's no, when the halibut comes up and grabs your bait, they don't feel the weight. They don't feel the tension. You have your thumb on the spool or your index finger on the spool if you're fishing correctly. Or your thumb on the spool if you're fishing booger eater style. But you have your little bit of tension on there as he's starting to take it the halibut comes up and he grabs your bait and he starts to pull all he's feeling is your index finger or your thumb he's not feeling the weight so he's actually pulling that bait away from the weight if you can think about it sliding sinker laying on the bottom with your bait attached and then when the fish grabs it he's just pulling that along without having to pull the weight it feels more natural to him, I believe. He's going to inhale that down. Then you're going to set the hook. And then that's when all holy heck starts to happen. But here's when people lose the halibut. Once you hook it, stop jerking. Halibut have a very, very soft mouth. They're, they have that membrane inside the walls of their mouth. That, that's normally where you hook them. You do not want to start jerking. You want to start slowly winding the halibut to the surface. And you want to be ready with the gaff or the net. Hopefully you have a net on your boat because remember we talked about it a million times. If you don't have a net, you're going to get a ticket. But you want to be standing there with the gaff or the net. If you do this the way I say, You'll never even know how big that halibut is because you haven't jerked. You're slowly winding. That halibut's going to come to the surface. 90% of the time you're fishing less than 60 feet of water. That halibut, he's just going to slowly come off the bottom as you're slowly winding. He's never going to realize until the last second that he's just about to be caught. Where people have the disconnect when they hook that halibut, first of all, they don't even understand that it's a fish because it feels like dead weight. So then they're jerking it, trying to get it off of whatever it snagged onto. But remember, you went to my website, you learned the spots, you fished the way I suggest to fish. When you put your bait down on the bottom, there is a phenomenal chance you're going to get a bite. I've heard this so many times from so many people. When they blow it and they jerk the halibut off and they don't get them, they're like, well, I didn't even know I, was, I had a bite. How bad are you at fishing if you don't think when you drop your line in the water that you're going to get a bite? My gosh, if you're a member of my website, you better think every time that bait touches the water, you have about a 99% chance of getting a bite. That's why you're fishing. That's why you're following my simple game plan and you're following it to the t and you're going out there and you're executing and now you're getting a bite but here's back to what we were talking about when you get bit on that halibut you set the hook and it's not a big swing for the fence it's, it's a put it in gear take a couple cranks get the slack out of your line and a quick little twitch sets that hook and then a slow steady wind as that halibut comes up off the bottom and those of you that have ever halibut fish you know what i'm talking about that halibut, nine out of 10 times, doesn't know he's hooked till he sees the surface of the water. That's why you need to be ready with a gaffer and net. 
I preferably always want to have that net right next to me because a lot of times it's going to be a 22, 21 and a half, 23 inch fish. You're going to be right on the border. You're not going to know if it's legal or not. I'm telling you, a 22 inch halibut is a phenomenal table fare. It's a perfect. The law says you can have it. Why not be there with the net? Be ready. Your gaff could be right there. It could be a 25 pounder. It could be, hey, no problem, man. Gaff that sucker. But the minute that fish sees the surface of the water and realizes what just happened, now all holy heck's going to break. He's going to take off for the bottom again. All you have to do is hold the rod. He's going to strip off 20, 30 feet of line, and then he's going to stop again. But everybody wants to jerk the living bejesus out of the rod, especially the married men. They want to jerk that rod so hard. It's absolutely unbelievable. You just want to stop and calm down and take a deep breath and then wait. He's going to take that scream and run back down. To the bar. Then he's going to stop. Then you're going to slowly wind him up again. It's not that hard, but we make it hard. We always seem to make it harder than it really is. You just want to slowly turn the handle, wind him to the top, but you want to make sure you're ready with that gaff or that, that net. You want that to be ready. And a lot of times when you're halibut fishing, you're fishing by yourself because most people don't have the patience to halibut fish. So therefore, it's hard to fish with other people on the boat because you you have the mindset, hey, I'm going to go catch a halibut today. You might spend all day for that one fish. You might get you might get bored if you're not into it. And if you have friends on the boat, they're not going to be into it because they don't understand. They saw all those pictures of all those fish that you caught the last time you went fishing. And now you're going to take them halibut fishing. Halibut fishing basically is like watching paint dry for the people that aren't into it. If you're not into it, or if you're just not, you don't understand the whole thing, you have to have a phenomenal amount of patience, but you have to have a plethora of spots because spots and conditions and wind is going to dictate everything. If that wind is blowing really hard, you're probably not going to do very well. If the there's absolutely no wind at all, you're probably not going to do very well. You want that small amount of wind, something like four to six, four to eight knots, not a white cap, but just something that allows the boat to drift across those areas where the hard bottom meets the sand. Those fish are going to be right on the edges of those hard bottoms where they meet the sand. Inside big kelp beds, like inside San Onofre, inside San Mateo Point, inside Torrey Pines, up at Catalina, inside the kelp at Salta Verde, inside the kelp, up around the back side of the island at those kelp spots, inside edge between the beach and the kelp, drift in those little channels, that's where those halibut are going to be stacked up because they're in there ambushing the bait fish. And the bait fish are usually traveling from either the surf out to the kelp or from the kelp into the surf to look for something to eat. And that's when those halibut ambush them. And that's when you want to be fishing in those zones Everything matters. So if you get up in the morning and the wind's howling, don't go halibut fishing because you're not going to catch one. It's just not going to happen. Or maybe stay in the harbor where the wind's not blowing so hard. There's plenty of halibut to catch in the harbor. Tide has a big play on the halibut bite. Tidal movement has a huge play. Wind is the best tide. Well, a lot of people are going to tell you a lot of different things. A lot of some people are going to tell you they get bit really well on the incoming tide. Some people are going to tell you they get bit on the outgoing tide. You're going to have to go out there and figure it out. I've been bit on both tides. I've been bit on no tides. I have, have the luxury to go only on the day where the tide's coming in or only on the day when the tide's going out. But it does matter. And the best thing to do is keep a little book on your boat. All right. Today we caught them. What was the tide doing? All right, it was coming in when we caught him today. It was on an incoming tide. We caught him at 2.13 in the afternoon. We got our first bite. The tide was coming in. We caught him on the incoming tide, right down the wind. The wind was blowing less than eight knots. Yeah, it was not even... Inside of 12 knots is a white cap. White caps 
occur when it's 12 knots. So anything other than a white cap is going to be inside of 12 knots. You want to have some type of wind, though, so you have the drift. You want to have some type of tide, so you have the drift. All those things matter. Current, when you're halibut fishing, I don't think it's that important. I think tidal movement and wind is more important than, than current when it's halibut time. And then understanding where the hard bottom meets the sand, where the edge of the rock is. Big rocks, Clemente Reef, the edges of Clemente Reef have, have halibut on it. The pipes, the Newport pipe, historically phenomenal halibut spot. Historically, the San Onofre pipe, historically a phenomenal. The Buccaneer pipe, another great pipe down in Oceanside. These pipes are historically really, really good places to catch halibut, but not on the rock itself, on the sides of the pipe in the sand because those halibut are laying on the edges right there with their little, their little body where the one edge of it can feel the, the rock and the other edge is out in the sand. And they know that's a good place to ambush that bait fish. All these things matter. You need to put together a little, a little uh, map in your head of these rocks you're fishing, these hard bottoms you're fishing, these kelp beds you're fishing, and understand that all that matters. And then you start to put together the puzzle and you start to put together the pieces. And I do the sliding sinker. I don't like to fish for halibut out in 200 feet of water or 150 feet of water where they like to get out there in the early spring and spawn out in that deep water. That's not my fish. That's just not my fish. I'm not into it. I don't like it. Just like I don't like lobster fishing deeper than 50 feet of water. I'm just not into it. That's not my deal. I leave that for all the other people. All the other boogers can go out there and have that. I'm the inshore halibut guy. Surf line my, is my golden zone. Just outside the surf line is golden. On those pipes, on those insides of those kelp beds, those are all my golden zones. Over at Catalina, the shallower the better. Seems like a lot of halibut on the beaches, on the back and on the front side of Catalina. All this stuff is what I've learned over 48 years of fishing in Southern California for a living. I've watched all the different things happen and I've tried to put the puzzle together the best that I can. But the number one thing I want to tell everybody, you got to understand when you go halibut fishing is you have to be patient. That is probably the number one thing. Most people spend the day driving from area to area and they fish an area for 10, 15 minutes. They don't get a halibut. They're like, Oh, there's no halibut here. My God, you didn't even give yourself a chance to dissect the zone. You didn't even give yourself a chance to look around. You didn't eat my best favorite bait. I just got asked that question again. I like to use, if they have live anchovies at the bait barge, I'm using live anchovies. If they only have big giant sardines or mackerel, I'm not into that. I like dead grunion is my very most favorite go-to bait. And I can catch those on the beach myself when the grunion run. I put them in the freezer and I bag them up a hundred in a bag and I'll go bass fishing with them or halibut fishing. Those are my two very most favorite baits. I can't tell you what you like. I don't know. I know Jim's over here losing his mind on Instagram. Saying, tell everybody, I only like to use mackerel. I don't care. I'm not you. I'm you. You need to have your own seminar where you tell everybody what you like to do. I'm only telling you what I like to do for some reason. That's what I think people are watching me to learn what I like to do. I cannot tell, tell them, Jim, what you like to do because I don't know what you like. And I sure the heck don't know what you like to eat. I don't know how hungry you are. I don't know how many fish you want to eat. That's what another thing. That's one of my pet peeves is when I catch a bunch of fish and I take them home and I have people go, did you really need that many? How do you know how hungry I am? How do you know what I like? How do you know how hungry I am? I like to eat fish for breakfast, lunch dinner. And in the middle of the day, I have a sensible fish snack. So don't worry about that. And don't worry about how you do it compared to how I do it. I'm not talking about that. I don't know how the locals do it. I don't know how Jimmy Joe Jack does it. I don't know how Sam does it. I only know how your saltwater guy, Captain Dave Hansen has done it for 48 years. And my way works very, very well for me. That's who it works for. And that's all I have to go by gang. I'm sorry. If that upsets you, Jim, over there, if that upsets you that I don't know how you like to do it, my crystal ball broke about 45 years ago.
Todd Manser and I tried to glue it back together in my old apartment. We had that crystal ball. That crystal ball used to work really well for me back in the late 70s, early 80s. And then I dropped it and it broke. And now I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. But Todd Manzer tried to help me glue it back together. Shane, if you you can ask your dad, hey, did you help Dave try to glue back his, and he's, he'll tell you, yeah. And then he had to call an ambulance because we couldn't get it glued back together. Gang, I'll be with you tomorrow. We're going to try to do that call-in thing. Please, some of you call in. Tell me what you want to talk about. Tell me what you want to know, what you think you know. Let me know. And uh, I will ask you, I don't like to fish them in deeper water. If you just jumped into the conversation, you're late. I don't know how you like to do it. If you like to fish them in deeper water, have at it. I'm not into that. I like to fish them in shallow water on the beaches. I like to fish them where I like to fish them. I have no idea how you like to fish them. All right. If you guys have a suggestion of what you would like me to talk about, send them to your saltwater guide at yahoo.com. Your saltwater guide at yahoo.com. Call me tomorrow. If you don't know my number, it's plastered on every bathroom wall across America. Also, it's on my website. It's on lots of my email, uh, lots of my post. My phone number is very, very simple to find. It will not take you very long to find it. If you do want to call in, just call in. Here we go. 949-374-0786. Give me a call. Let me know what you want to talk about tomorrow. I will talk to you all tomorrow. Kelly and I are on our way to go buy some stuff out walmart for our monkey hopefully soon the monkey will be on the show i will be here for you tomorrow we'll do some call in fun stuff if not i'll just babble on like i always do all right gang thanks everybody for joining us today i'll talk to you tomorrow have a great day be kind to each other turn off the news they're all lying to you and i'll see you tomorrow another great